another episode of Kingdom Concepts. We're so excited for these next few episodes. We're going to be talking about faith that grows. And if you have not already seen uh, the our previous episodes, please go back. You can always go to our Facebook page, our YouTube account, whichever one you want, in however platform you use. And please go back and see the episodes that we've done. You'll, you'll be very blessed. Amen. I'm here with my husband once again, and we're about ready to start an uh, just an, an amazing episode. Yeah, you know, there's so much that can be said about faith uh, to where, and we don't have the time to cover it in the detail that we'd like to, but the area where we're starting off today is we're going to be talking about, you know, how to cause faith to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is it that causes faith to grow? And uh, the Bible says a lot about faith, so let's just dive right in and we're going to uh, just see what the Bible has to say about how, what faith is and what you can do to cause it to be developed. And it, it is God's will for our faith to grow. We shouldn't be saved and stay at the same level. Every single uh, opportunity that we have, we should be taking things to cause our faith to grow. And I think, you know, just even talking about the fact that it should grow, it shouldn't stay the same. Our faith this year should be greater than our faith was next last year you know we should be doing things to cause those things the faith to grow inside of us you know yeah i think the reason why a lot of people some people's faith doesn't grow is they don't know what it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and sometimes you can have high expectations but it's on the wrong information mm -hmm. you know the bible says in four different places in the word of god habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 That's galatians 3:11 so um romans 10:17 in Hebrews 10, 38, every one of those chapters or verses say that the just shall live by faith. Let me read it to you. Habakkuk 2, 4 says this. Behold, the soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. You know, when something is said more than one time in the Bible, we need to pay attention to that. And you just quoted what four, things, four yeah. places where it says the just shall live by faith. No other way for us to live but by faith, not by uh, uh, our sense knowledge, our uh, wisdom that we think we may have, or somebody else's words, we have to live by faith in every area of our life. Yeah, and you know, and those examples are Old Testament and New Testament because it doesn't change. Yes, that's right. You know, um, and as Christians, what this is telling us is that we have a recommended way of living if we are the just. That's right. And to be just means that you've been justified, you know, and to be justified, it means it's just if. I'd never sinned. That's what it means to be justified. And it means that we've been brought out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. It means that we're in a position now to where we're in a right place with God. And God says, when you're in that right place with him, he says, you are to live by faith. And, you know, it's the greatest environment for us to live and for our, our faith to thrive. And yes. I think about, you know, as an example, you know, a bird. You know, its recommended way of living is in the air. You put a bird in the air and that bird can fly, it can grow, it can go places, you know, uh, it never could go without being in the air. And uh, it's the same thing with like a fish. A fish's recommended way of living is in the water. When you put a fish in the water, it will thrive, it'll excel, it'll grow. And it, that's the way it is with our faith. When our faith is in the right environment, when we are living by faith, when our lives are there in faith, then we're going to do the best. But if you take a bird and you put it in a fish's environment under the water, that bird's not going to do well. That's right. And if you take a fish and you throw it up in the air, that fish isn't going to do well in a bird's environment because that's not the recommended way for that, those animals to live. And for us to be Christians and to live any other way but by faith means that we're going to be living in an environment where we cannot grow in our faith mm -hmm. and we cannot excel. Mm -hmm. And I, I always think about that term. People say, oh, man, they're like a fish out of water. You know, when they're, in, when they're right. confused or when they're uh, in a place that they don't understand, you know, or in a, in a different job or a different uh, environment that, that they're not supposed to be there or they just showed up. You know, people say, oh, he's like a fish out of water. Why? Because when it's a fish out of water, it's not in the correct environment. Well, you think about it. How many times, you know, have you asked somebody, you know, um, how something's going to happen for them. They'll say, oh, by faith, God's going to do this. But when you ask them, what does that mean? Most people, their definition of faith is just having, hoping. having a belief. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's having a belief. But he says right here that faith is the recommended way for us to live. So if 
we're, we're supposed to live this way. It means I'm supposed to handle my business this way. I'm supposed to raise my children this way. It means that, that I'm supposed to do everything in my life according to this recommended way of living. And in order for faith to grow, you must first understand what faith is and how it's to be handled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me read Hebrews 11, 1. And this is what it says. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm-hmm. the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Faith is always now. Mm-hmm. If it's not now, it's not faith. Mm-hmm. You know, hope is always future tense. That's the, the difference between the two, is that faith always has to do with now. Hope is always what you're expecting to come. You know, uh, I, I hope that I'll get that job. You know, faith is knowing the job's mine now. Yeah, you believe that you have that job. You have a scripture to back up your faith. Talk, you know, people, uh, you always say when people say to you, oh, I'm believing for this, or I'm standing for this, or I'm hoping for this. You say, well, what's the scripture that you're standing on? What What are you standing on? There's something that causes that faith to grow, and it's the word. You take those scriptures that cause your faith to grow, and you have a, a right to stand on certain scriptures, not just a, a, like you said, a belief. You know, you believe this. What happened for my mom? What happened for my sister? It happened for this person. Well, what are you believing for, and how are you, what are you taking to stand uh, for this thing to happen? Well, I know for us, when we first started learning what it meant to live by faith, um, you know, we were in a good church. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it, I mean, they were teaching us a lot of things. Um, you know, we learned how to be soul winners. We learned how to you know, to get baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We learned about, you know, miracles and things. But when it came to living, we didn't know how to live. Mm-hmm. You know, we were doing the best that we could with what we knew. And when we came into the word of faith, mm-hmm. then we understood that God has an order for things to happen. We understood that there's a way that God does things. And uh, I think for a lot of believers, you know, that were in that, in that position that we were, they're, they're living by hope more yeah. than faith. Yeah. And there's, hope has a place mm-hmm. because you, you, you need to have hope. The Bible says now abides faith, hope, and love, you know. And so hope has a position, but we're not to live by hope. Mm-hmm. You know, we're supposed to live by faith, understanding that God's already accomplished something for us now. You know, and I really, I also think that somebody else's revelation it, it, it could be ours, but we have to do what they did to have that, that same revelation, that same faith that somebody used, that same faith that somebody used to do something or accomplish something. It has to be a rhema thing. It has to be a revelation to us. We can't just hope that it happens for us also. You know, I, I remember when we were first learning to allow faith to grow and we were learning to um, just do things by faith and walk by faith. We just started learning about you know, taking the the word of God and walking in it. And I remember you were leaving to a trip. I don't know if you remember this. This was like a bunch of years ago, like 26, 27 years ago. You were leaving on a trip. We had three little kids, and we didn't have a lot of money, and you had to be gone. You were going to be gone for a week. I don't know if you remember this. I remember this. I remember that you remember this. And I remember reading a magazine, and it was Adventures in Faith, uh, Jerry, Seville, uh, Jerry Seville's magazine. And Miss Carolyn had written an article, and she'd written this article about how uh, Brother Jerry, uh, well, her husband was leaving for a trip, and how he was leaving without any money, and that she told him, you go ahead and go, that God's going to take care of us. And she, she, it was, it was an amazing article, and it was an article about uh, how she ended up finding $50 in her pocket, mm-hmm. or $5 in her pocket, she sewed it, and then God blessed her with $50 she found, and she was able to... All this stuff is, and so I just read this article. The next day, here's an opportunity for my faith to grow. The next day, we, uh, you got called and you have to go on a trip, on a ministry trip with our pastor. We didn't have any groceries. I had three babies. I had one extra one that she did, so maybe that's why my faith hadn't grown that much. <laughs> so we had three babies. One was in diapers, and I remember telling you the day before, and you were like, you know, should I go? You know, and I said, no, you go. It's going to be okay. God's going to take care of us. And this is before cell phones. Mm-hmm. We didn't have a cell phone yet and all that. And I said, no, no, it's okay. You go. I just read this article. I read you the article. And I said, it's going to be great. And so the next morning, you're about to leave. And I have no groceries. Uh, you're about to leave, gone for a week. It was eight hours. You were taking a drive. And I think it was six or seven, eight hours to where you were getting from where we were. I said, you go ahead and go. 
And I remember writing you, this is not a proud moment in my... I remember this moment. <laughs> I remember you're just about to leave. And I said, I can't believe you're leaving me with three babies and no groceries. How could you do this? And you turned around and you looked at me. And, you, and our pastor pulled up to pick you up. I can't believe I was crying. I was upset. I, I just was like, how am I going to do this? Uh, in my defense, we're barely learning how to walk in faith. Yeah. Barely saved, barely learning how to walk in faith. And you, you're like, what do I do? And I said, just go. Just, you know, I was all dramatic and crying. And uh, you walked out and you shut the door. And then I remember all of a sudden, it just hit me that I was allowing circumstances to speak to me. I wasn't allowing my faith to grow. So I walked back in the room, walked into my bedroom, and I shut the door. I got on my knees, and I prayed. And I said, Lord, I said, you need to fix my spirit right now, my heart. I just read this article yesterday. I need that revelation to be my own, and I need to walk in this, and I need my faith to grow. And I prayed. I mean, it took me, you know, a little bit. I prayed. I, I adjusted my posture. Yeah. I, adjust, I adjusted my faith walk, you know, and I just to myself, I was fine, you know, got a phone call like 40 minutes after you'd left, got a phone call, a friend calls me, she's like, what are you doing? I said, oh, she's like, let's go, let's go shopping for a few days, and I said, oh, I said, I can't, she's like, why? I said, no, I just can't, and she perceived why I couldn't. Next thing you know, she shows up, I didn't fish at her, I didn't tell her my need, I didn't tell her anything, because God was doing something in me, Yeah. and so she's like, okay. Within an hour, she showed up with a trunk full of groceries. A trunk full of groceries. She got me a babysitter. And by the time you called me, and for eight hours, I'm so sorry. For eight hours, you're praying all the way there because all you saw was a distraught wife, not a wife full of faith, not a wife that was growing in her faith. For eight hours, you called me eight hours later, or I called you eight hours later because I knew where you guys were going to be. And you were, I'm so sorry. I, left. I said, oh, I'm, I said, Within an hour, we had groceries, and I said, I'm on a shopping spree. I'll, I'll be gone for a few days at the same time you're gone. And you're like, what? But I remember that, and that for me, in the past, you know, 27 years, that's been a, a, a uh, I don't know, just like a, a how would you, a, not a tombstone, or you call it a, 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 a memorial, a memorial yeah. of the day that I realized, you know what? Somebody else's faith isn't going to do this. Just because I read an article, just because it happened for somebody mm -hmm. else, it has to be my faith. I had That's a stand right. on my faith. And so I'll always remember that. And since then, I mean, we've, we've had, I've had opportunities for it to go the wrong way, but God just reminds me of that. Yeah. You, you can't live in another man's revelation. Exactly. You know, and, and I think it was Jesse Duplana said, you can only fly so high on borrowed wings. Mm -hmm. And I remember those, those, those early years when, when we were learning, you know, how to live by faith, how to appropriate our faith. Remember, when we had, we had to start learning what faith was. And, you know, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We had to learn to take God at his word. And I think one of the reasons why some people, their, their faith, you know, doesn't grow as quick as uh, maybe it, 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 it could and it should is that, People struggle sometimes with trusting God mm -hmm. at the beginning mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I think it's one of the number one greatest fears of most Christians, and I don't think I'm exaggerating that, is that they're afraid that God is just like them. Mm -hmm. That, you know, uh, that, you know, he's not going to hold up his end of the bargain. He's not going to do what he said because they've had so many people in their lives that said that they would and they didn't. And sometimes we've been those people. Mm -hmm. But you come to realize that. God will always perform what he says. He said he watches over his word to perform it. And it takes faith, you know, to step into that place where you trust God. It, it takes trust in his word that God's going to do what he said. And, and I know for us, uh, one of the, the things that stands out for me was when our, our son Joshua, when uh, he was five months old, he had chicken pox gone wild. And, um, you know, practically on, you know, almost died. And they had to air vacuum to San Diego Children's Hospital. And he's in that pediatric intensive care unit for two and weeks. We were baby Christians. Oh, man, we didn't we were, know nothing. We didn't know anything. But, uh, the only thing that we knew was that his word was true. That's yeah. the only thing we knew. But yeah, because the, the doctors, they weren't giving us good reports. And I remember the thing that was an anchor to our soul. 
was that it had been prophesied that our son, this is when we found out he was going to be a boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was still in your womb, and it was prophesied that he would come face to face with the enemy, the devil, and that, man, he would overcome. And we held on to that with everything that we had. We, we weren't moved by what we'd seen because faith isn't the, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And, man, we believed in the unseen. We believed in the spoken word. And that word sustained us, and God touched his body, and, man, brought him home, and and we learned a vital lesson at that time that God can be taken at his word. If he said he's going to do something, God will do it. Do you remember when you reminded me of that word? Do you remember the point when we were at the hospital and you reminded me of that? They had, he was, had a fever of 106. He's five months old. Mm-hmm. had a fever of 106. And um, he's laying there. He's packed in ice. And the nurse had walked in. The the flight team had showed up from San Diego Children's Hospital to take him to mm-hmm. airlift him to a different hospital. Walked in, and he asked the nurse there what medication he was on. And she goes like this, and she pulls the thing, and she goes, "Oh, we never turned it on. He, they had never turned on his medication. Yeah, no antibiotics. antibiotics. No antibiotics for almost 24 hours. And I remember he is the guy is upset. The doctor, because they sent a doctor, and he is upset. I could visibly see he's upset, and I knew this is not good." My son is packed in ice. He's five months old. He wasn't moving. They did a spinal tap on him. He didn't move. Nothing. And I remember they're just about to leave him. And I was at that point where I was going to lose it. I said, you know, baby Christian not knowing. And I remember you grabbed me and you said, babe, you said, remember the word that was spoken over him. And I just looked at you and I said, you're right. He's right. I knew that I had to have faith in God and his word. And I said, you're right. And I walked over to the doctor, uh, to the doctor that was taking him to the ambulance. And I said, can I pray for you? I didn't know what to pray. I remember I laid hands on them and I prayed. And they, they stopped and looked at me. But they received my prayer. And I said, thank you. And that was it. And, and for six hours, we, we had to drive to San Diego. I knew nothing. And I stood on that word. We stood on that word. Yeah. And God came through. And, yes, he did. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you have faith and to come to a place where you understand how to make it grow yes. um, because faith, you know, you, every, Bible says that every one of us have been given a measure of faith mm-hmm. and you can cause that measure to grow as you exercise that faith. Yeah. And there's going to be plenty yes, of opportunities yes. to do so because life happens. Mm-hmm. And the thing that helped me also in that, in those early years of learning how to trust God at his word, how to live by mm-hmm. faith, how to live by his word, mm-hmm was getting that revelation of that scripture where God tells in his, us in his word that God cannot lie. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I first read that, my understanding was, oh, God can't lie because he'd be a bad God if he lied. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, that'd make him a bad God. But it was through study and prayer, God showed us he can't lie because he can't lie. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not that, that it's because he's so good he can't lie. I mean, that's part of it. But it's, there's so much faith. You know, words are containers. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they contir- can contain faith or they contain contaminated faith, which is fear. Mm-hmm. Fear and faith are the same thing. It's ones you believe in for the positive, ones you believe in for the negative. Fear is faith that's going backwards. Good. And, uh, and we had to learn that, that faith, when we live by that and trust God in that, that he would perform that word. So anything that God has spoken, it, it'll happen. You know, when God said, let there be light, there, it wasn't a struggle for there to be light. Mm-hmm. When God commanded the, the land to come forth, the land came forth. Everything that he spoke, it happened. And we've been given that same creative power to where the words that we speak, you know, there's, there's life in those words. There's, the yeah. Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. Do you think that? And I, I know the answer to this, but don't you think that people that, that, you know, we have faith and we have the faith to grow. We have all this faith. But that the minute that we open our mouth and that our words are contrary to what our faith is saying, you know, we're saying we have faith for this, faith for this. But we open our mouth and our words are contrary. Our words are, are opposite of what faith is. Don't you think that that, that weakens our faith and it, it, it uh, 
it derails what we're trying to do and the faith, you know, what do you think? It, yeah, it, it can postpone it, you know. Yes, absolutely. I remember what Dr. Seville had shared with us one time that he, he had a, a vision where God showed him an angel that had this basket oh, yes. that had all, everything yes. he'd been praying for. All these wonderful things were in this basket. And as he had faith, that angel was moving towards him with this basket of the fulfillment of what he was praying for. And every time he doubted or every time his language changed, it was yes. contrary to what he was believing for or his actions were contrary. Because sometimes you can say, well, I'm believing God's going to do. God's going to pay the rent. But, honey, go down to Walmart and pick up some boxes in so case we, we, yeah, so we can start packing. It's like you're saying yes. one thing, but your actions are saying something else. But he said that every time he did that, the angel would stop and that things he was believing for would fall out of the basket. Mm -hmm. By the time the angel showed up to him, only some of the things he was believing for were there. Yeah. And I think sometimes people blame God. Oh, I trusted God that he was going to do this and, and he didn't do it. Well, God will do his part, mm -hmm. but God will never do our part. Our part is to release our faith, to stand on his word, to trust him that whatever he says he's going to do it mm -hmm. it's it's understanding that his word is a sure foundation it's understanding that there's nothing that you cannot experience if you only believe yeah. you know when things are contrary to when things are challenging and you know there might be some of you that are watching this broadcast today and maybe there's some giants that are standing before you mm -hmm. Uh, some things that are so big, so huge, so beyond your own ability. I'm here to tell you that if there's a giant standing before you, it's because there's a David inside of you. And oh, that God. David has been called by God to conquer. Amen. And that giant that's before you, it's going to come down. But you have to have the word of the Lord in your mouth. You have oh, yeah. to have the word of the Lord in your heart. And God will show up. I mean, he... He's the supplier of everything that you need. Uh, and his word, uh, he's in harmony with it. Him and his word are one. And we learned mm -hmm. how to stand on that word. When there was no other option, oh, yeah. we knew that God would not fail us, that God would never lie to us and give us a, a false hope or a false expectation. Everything that he has ever spoken to you and I, and we stood in faith, with patience, mm -hmm. with our light on, yeah. <laughs> believing it's going to come home to us, God's always brought it. Yes, he has. You know, the next episode, we're almost done with this one. I really want us to touch on our mouth and, and, and how it can affect our faith. I really would like us to talk about it. I also remember Jerry Seville, uh, our pastor, he said that he had gone to Ken Copeland in the early years, and he said, you know, he said, I have, I have no problem when it comes to healing i have a problem when it comes to this or that he said uh you know to believe he said for these things he said but when it comes to prosperity he said i'm having a hard time you know catching hold of this you know what what should i do and he said i can't cope and turn around and told him jerry the problem is your big mouth and he said huh and he said he was so upset that can copeland told him that and he said the problem is your big mouth and that Ken Copeland just walked away and left him there. And he said he was just so upset. But then after prayer, he, he thought about it. And he said, yes, the words that he was saying were going against the faith that he was believing for. So we really need to touch on that because our faith, um, we can quote all scriptures all day long. And we can quote faith and the just shall live by faith all day long. But if our words are going against the faith that we're, the, the scriptures that we're saying, it could totally derail us. Yeah, you don't want your speech to betray you. That's right. That's you know? right. We're so grateful that you uh, have been with us for this broadcast. And uh, as, you know, Eliana said, we're going to continue it again, uh, part two. But uh, I just want to encourage you to, you know, subscribe to these broadcasts, share them with your loved ones. Amen. Because this is the word of God. Amen. The things that we're sharing, we're sharing our life experiences. We're, we're sharing things that we know. We're sharing things that we've applied and uh, along with these Kingdom Concept broadcasts, man, we have, you know, outreaches and conferences and retreats that we offer. And there'll be some information that you'll be hearing about shortly, about some upcoming events that you can register and be a part of. And those things will change your life. Amen. 
God has a purpose and a plan for you. And he wants to see you become the best version of you. And sometimes you just have to make sure that you seize the opportunities that he places in front of you. If you'll seize those opportunities, your life will go to a whole nother level. You'll find yourself rising into that place that God has always destined and called and purposed for you to be. We love you very much. Our hearts are with you. Our prayers are for you. And I pray that your faith will grow and rise to a whole nother level. Amen. As you journey with us through these teachings. Amen. You remember that the word always works. Always. Amen. Always.